All right, South Africa's uh, official unemployment rate fell to 32.9% in the third quarter of 2022 from 339 in the second quarter, according to the Statistics Agency. Statistics South Africa said the number of unemployed people totaled 7.7 .7 million in July through September period, compared with 7.9 in the previous three months. Uh, South Africa has one of the highest unemployment rates in sub-Saharan Africa, according to the United Nations uh, International Labor Organization. The country recorded an unemployment rate of 35.3%, fourth quarter of 2021, the highest since the quarterly labor force survey began in 2008. And you can see there with the expanded definition, it actually increases to 43%. Joining us now uh, from uh, South Africa, uh, Mkulisi Masango. Mkulisi, good afternoon to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. So what did you make of those numbers as far as the, uh, the, the jobs report is concerned? Look, it would seem like uh, there is a silver lining in all the mayhem post COVID-19. You know, when the South African government does come out and say that the unemployment rate has recorded another consecutive decline in the third quarter of the year to about 32.9 in the third quarter of the year. So which now actually means that uh, unemployment in the country has dropped to about uh, 369,000 if you put it in better terms. So what's also very interesting is really watching some of those small and medium enterprises really you know just try and get their feet back on track following uh the COVID-19 uh, pandemic here in the country what we also do know at some of those uh, statistics that they came in is that about 43.1 percent of those people as well were also now in the job market and really trying to assist the economy come back to its former glory because this is at a time where most sectors and most industries in the country really try and come back uh, from this global pandemic that sent uh, most economies to it to their knees so also what the government has been saying is that they're really trying to bolster efforts uh, to ensure that uh, we keep on this particular track especially when it comes to ensuring that uh, the people who have the necessary skills as well as know-how are able to absorb to be absorbed uh, by the job market. And this has all been attributed uh, to the economy really starting to slowly go back, as well as the various sector also bolstering their skills development uh, units to ensure that there are people who are employable, but not only just employable roaders, but are all also able to bring the necessary skills onto the table. Because they did say that it's one thing to have a person who is employable, but it's another to have a person who has the necessary skills as well as know how to do a particular job. So all of that has been attributed to the fact that most industries in the country are also starting, you know, to 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 lift their hands to say that they're able to assist in ensuring that more and more people in the country i employable by the day great stuff that sounds encouraging all right i guess manufacturing trade construction transport seems to have added the most jobs are those sectors that are getting enough support from the government well, it would seem like, uh, you know, the government has really been trying to fine tune their efforts to ensure that they give support uh, to these various sectors. We saw yesterday the president was in the Western Cape and Cape Town at another summit, which is going to try and bolster uh, some sectors here in the country to ensure that, you know, they're able to continue functioning properly. So it would seem like the government itself is trying to tighten its grip to ensure that some of those informal sectors that are also also contributing to the economy are in a position and also in a place to say that look as South Africans what do we do for you guys what do we do for South Africans who come to us and say they want jobs but do not have the skills we pump in the funds to ensure that we equip them with the skills that are necessary for them to be absorbed by these various sectors so it would seem like uh, with all these summits that uh, the government has been having post COVID-19 there is a somewhat effort to ensure that uh, South Africa's economy really tries and picks its speed up, uh, maybe even goes back to its former glory before COVID-19 at this particular point in time. But it remains to be seen how much those efforts would really be effective because sometimes you have South Africans, on the other hand, you know, just displaying a sense of despondency, saying that most of these summits that government has been having are just talk shop. It doesn't really trickle uh, to the ground, to the people in which it matters the most. So we really eagerly 
watching to see how some of these summits, like, uh, you know, some of these summits that we see in the various provinces in the country are really going to transform or translate to, is it going to be efforts where you have government saying that all everybody in the various provinces has jobs at a certain particular point in time, or they're just going to be talk shop. But I can tell you for now, it seems like there is some sort of effort from government's end. All right. Now, since you mentioned government, youth unemployment still pretty high at about, I think, 45 percent. Um, is there any optimism in turning that around? Look, um, I think uh, having been, you know, on the ground most of the times pre-COVID rotis and um, during COVID and even post-COVID, well, sort of in post-COVID right now, we can just say that we're seeing less and less of COVID-19 in the country. But I can tell you that there was a sense of you know, the youth in the country saying that they've lost all hope. Most of them even coming out to say that, um, you know, they just don't know what to do because uh, even looking for a job itself needs resources. It needs, you know, you need a laptop to first send your CV. You need uh, the skills as well as the know-how uh, to also be absorbed into a particular space. You need experience as well to be absorbed into a certain space with a youth actually that said to me, it's actually impossible to look for a job when you have some of the jobs specs coming out to say that it needs a person with about five years of experience in a particular sector. When you're fresh out of college, how are you able to have that much of experience in order for you to be absorbed into a certain sector? So on the one hand, we have a youth that is saying, look, we want jobs. We want to get jobs. But at the same time, there's a lot of red tape that prevents us from getting these jobs. And on the other hand, you also have government saying that, look, we're willing to meet you guys halfway. If you say there's red tape, we're willing to remove some of that red tape to ensure that some of our youth is employable i think which is why we're seeing that number that is now decreased now the unemployment rate that is significantly decreased in the third quarter uh the, the ruling the african national congress the anc set a target of 14 percent unemployment by 2020 is covid 19 an acceptable reason for why that target hasn't been met Absolutely not. I can tell you that is definitely not an acceptable reason because even during COVID times, there had been budgets that had been allocated to ensure that certain uh, South Africans don't really feel the pinch of that global pandemic. You had funds being uh, pumped into youth empowerment. You had funds being pumped into ensuring that there's a COVID relief fund that ensures that youth are able to at least partake in the economy during that time. What did the government do with those funds? It was squandered in corruption. So I can tell you right now that at that time, it would seem that, you know, government really was not uh, keen to really meet uh, the youth of the country halfway. And this is also at a time when we're seeing a whole lot of corruption cases that are currently right now being dealt with by the likes of the Special Investigating Unit, which is, of course, attributed to some of those COVID funds, which were supposed and intend to ensure that uh, they make life more easier for South Africa to make sure that South Africans were able to be employed, to ensure that South Africans were equipped with the necessary skills for the various jobs that they would like to get into. But what happened to those funds? Those funds really were squandered in corruption. So it would really uh, be interesting to see how the wheels of justice will be turning to ensure that some of those perpetrators within uh, the ruling party itself are dealt with, because this will be telling uh, Rotas. This is also at a time where they're setting the foundations for that all-important elective conference that's happening next month so if they'll be able to fine-tune and tighten the bolts on some of their economic policies uh, the youth unemployment policies it remains to be seen because at the end of the day they might talk shop as much as they can but what really matters is how all of those efforts and talk shop trickles down to the people on the ground where it matters the most Great stuff. Very, very informative. Arise correspondent uh, in the ground, the ground, boots on the ground there in South Africa, Mukulisi uh, Masango. Thank you so much for talking to us about those latest job numbers from the most industrialized economy on the African continent. Appreciate your time.